Hey everyone, it's time for another Death Battle Reaction video! This time, it's between The Winter Soldier! My guy! Oh. <laughs> I kinda wanna be a Winter Soldier, but you can understand. He's taking on the Red Hood. This is another Marvel vs. DC fight. How many of them have we had? I mean, oh my god, it's like... Every so often we get a Marvel and we get a DC one. And this time it's against anti, uh, anti-heroes. Uh, in this case, it's between, I want to say Bucky Rogers, although I do know the other one, Jason Todd, in which they are sidekicks who are killed, uh, more or less, and then revived to, well, <laughs> Revive to take on their heroes. It's kind of weird, but at the same time, yeah. It, it barely makes sense. So what we have here is a battle between two guys who were dead. One by, well, one by a trick, the other one by customer service. Can I help you? Okay, you're calling about uh, Kelly Robin? Yeah, we can do that for you. Okay, thank you. How bad? Alright. So we have that going. So who do I think is going to take it? Bucky or Todd? I'm kind of going with uh, Todd on this one. So, <laughs> Todd has kind of been winning me over, so I'm going to go with Todd. So Jason Todd, I'm going to have to say, this is the better armed one. I mean, I'll... Personally, if it was me, I, the Winter Soldier would definitely be me. Bucky. I'm wrong. Bucky Badger. Just throw that out there. So let's get on with this death battle. Who? Marvel's anti-hero, the Winter Soldier. DC's former sidekick, the Red Hood. Let's go. <laughs> Scientist. Every good superhero or world scientist needs one. <laughs> it's sick. That's right! Hey, I think we all know which one of us is the real sidekick here. Uh huh. The Winter Soldier, Marvel's brainwashed assassin. And Red Hood, DC's resurrected Robin turned vigilante. He's ways an iron boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. So here we go. I think this is going to be live action too, so that's going to be awesome. War 2. As strange as it is to name a war a sequel like some sort of movie, it was a time Well, I mean, the, the first one was caused by an assassination, the second one was caused by a coup. Including one, James Buchanan Barnes, known by his friends as Bucky. As a young lad, Bucky ripped open a standard superhero booster pack to find classic cards like and parents and deep desire to fight for justice. Yeah. That combo served him well in the U.S. military. He joined at the age of 15 and eventually got recruited for special assignments and training with British commandos. 15. He became friends with a little young hero and the country's favorite Boy Scout, Captain America. Bucky was initially unaware of the captain's secret identity. Until one night, he walked in on Steve Rogers. Oh, hi, Steve! Oh, wait, you're the American... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. had a lot of faith in Bucky and asked him to become his partner in crime. Your hero work. They fought yeah. side by side, kicking Nazi ass throughout the rest of the war. Thank you. The duo seemed to be unstoppable. Until one fateful mission, when they left after a plane to catch Nazi scientist Baron Zima. Fortunately, <laughs> Zima. Bucky, he was able to grab onto the plane. Well, Cap fell into the ocean to nab his last diving merit badge. Because he's a boy scout. Yeah, I, I get it, but... The plane was booby-trapped and exploded. Oh, no! As though the captain's loyal sidekick had been killed. But the so Bucky and the Cap were gone. Never truly leave us. Sometime no. after the war, a Russian submarine discovered Bucky's body preserved in the icy waters of the English Channel. That's... They decided to scoop him up and experiment on him. Really? Why not? Who could pass up a free body you found? <laughs> yeah. Even if it was missing an arm. <laughs> His training and experience made him the perfect candidate as the ultimate assassin. And after they revived and brainwashed him, they outfitted him with a shiny new bionic arm. Hello! Looking into the Winter Soldier. 
along with this new persona, the Winter Soldier sported a series <laughs> of killing machine. That's awesome. For starters, he was injected with the Infinity Formula. Huh. Later, really? Later, increased his physical ability to an enhanced state. This made him quite the formidable foe, even for Captain America, a foe who seemingly abandoned the values the duo previously shared. No kidding. He's fun plenty of times, and Bucky's been able to hold his own against his former partner. His advanced strength and speed, coupled with his knowledge of various fighting styles, <laughs> make for a lethal combination. That's for sure. He's skilled in everything from hand-to-hand -hand close quarters combat to an impressive arsenal of ranged weaponry. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's got a ton of sweet guns that are outfitted with some nifty pump and sensors, so only he can shoot them. If anyone okay. other than the Winter Soldier tries to use his firearms, they will self-destruct. He also wields a katana, throwing knives, pretty much whatever comes to the ninja. assassin con. Always a good time at Ascon. Uh, but we can't forget yeah. his most iconic piece, the arm. Well, I mean, it's definitely the coolest metal arm I've ever seen. What about mine? I made no. myself. Come on, Wiz, look at that thing. His is super pump. Plus, it's got a flamethrower, a retractable blade, and an electric <laughs> charge. Oh, shit! Stop being little and whiz! Come on! The size of the arm. It's how you use it. Sure, <laughs> it's strong, but it's not indestructible. It's been huh. torn up by a vibranium sword. Wait, wait! I thought the arm was made of vibranium. You're thinking of the movies. In the comics, huh. Bucky did not receive a vibranium arm birthday present from T'Challa. Canonically, his arm is made up of strong but unspecified metals, likely no. a form of titanium alloy, similar to the Iron Man suit. Even without okay. vibranium, it's tough to keep up with Bucky. He took a direct shot from Iron Man's repulsor blast, which was strong enough to tear through a helicopter moments later. And consider Whoa. the heroes he's battled. Wolverine, Daredevil, Iron Man, and obviously Captain America. Oh, it's a shame Bucky and Captain So is it stronger than animantium? Because I don't think it's good. stronger than vibranium. It's a scientific way to get people to remember who they are, right? Or yeah. you can use a cosmic cube to rewrite their memories. That's what Captain America did. <laughs> That's right. Who was so pissed off? He just straight up crushed the cube with his bare bionic hand. While this brought him back, Bucky wasn't the same man who went into those icy waters. No. His remorse for his crimes was tough to overcome, and he would always wonder if he's done enough good to finally redeem himself. But it's hard to do that, but... to shake everything he learned from his hero, Steve. Bucky returned to fighting for justice, and even took up the shield himself for a while. Hey, he pulled a Batman, or pull a Robin. Bucky's persistence and resilience makes him a hero in his own right. <laughs> that was fun to watch. When you think of the word sidekick, who immediately comes to mind? You. It's you. No, no. no. Robin. The Boy Wonder, Batman's iconic crime-fighting partner. Yeah, There's a Teen Titan one. Too bad the Cape Crusader sidecar has been revolving door of Mormons and acrobats. That's for sure. In alternate universes and what-if stories, Batman has taken five different Robins under his back. Wait, what a girl! Who moved on to pursue a superhero career of their own. Nightwing? Others didn't turn out so lucky. Enter Jason Todd. This poor kid was given the short end of the stick. And then the fans beat him to death with it. Hey, hey! He grew up on the streets of Gotham, getting by through a life of petty crime, until eventually running into the Batman himself. Okay. To steal the rims off the Batmobile. How brazen do you have to be? Serious fault. Well, I mean, you can't exactly look at the damn Batmobile and mistake it for someone else's car. No, you gotta admit, it's worth a lot of money. First Robin, Dick Grayson, and was on the lookout for a new sidekick. Impressive. Why does Batman need a sidekick? He had the of course, suit there's Batgirl. Yes, he really was 12. Yeah, yes. Well, creepy child abducting habits aside... Jason Peter Todd, that's nice. Robin, too bad this was a literal dick measuring contest that Jason had no chance in. <laughs> Despite some moderate success, Jason was yeah, he, an extraordinary I, Robin. And the fans saw it, too. In an unprecedented I, move. DC asked their readers to vote on whether or not Jason Todd would live or die. That's crazy. They voted to kill the shit out of that kid, Joker style. <laughs> what? Why? If you want to see Wiz die a horrible person, hey, hey, hey! I like Wiz. Okay, he's at least informative. We should get a, we should get a number four boobstick to go down, right? Jason Todd was dead. Until Superboy Prime punched a hole in the fabric of reality and accidentally brought him back. Dude, why? Don't ask. 
And after a dip in a magic hot tub, the Lazarus Jason was back in top form. Take that, readers! Your <laughs> contribution means nothing! Resolve renewed. Well, that, new identity that was a waste. His own killer, the Red Hood. Well, the freaky death bit did get back stronger and faster. I mean, it it, the helmet does resemble Spider-Man a little bit. Jason was already a hothead, but Red Hood had a serious temper with violent outbursts. Mm. He wasn't all right in the noggin, but he whoever had was destroy Batman and show him. Yeah, whoever was methods were unfit for saving Gotham City. And actually killed the Joker way back when. He never would have killed Jason in the first place. For a raging psychopath, he's not exactly wrong. Where Batman right. failed, Jason was up for the task. He pushed himself to become a killing machine. Mm -hmm. Even Bruce would have a tough time keeping up with. Even training with the yeah. League of Assassins and the all group of monk assassins. So much what, what, wait, 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 wait. Monks? In addition to Red Hood's wild Monks are peaceful. Tools, he also maintains a serious collection in his arsenal. Most obviously, his armored mm -hmm. cowl. While it provides him with sturdy protection, the sensors within also allow him to scan his surrounding area, neutralizing any potential stealth threats. Hmm. Plus, the hood can also explode, so that's convenient. It's like my new hangover recipe. So, yeah, no, 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 no. no. You get a hangover like that, you get explodes. You don't have to worry about it, you know, hangover. Some of these weird Worth way. The off blade to fight off supernatural threats. But probably really? most important is his continual use of venom. Wait, wait, wait. What's the symbiote doing here? No, no, the venom drug is what Bane uses to get all, you know, swole. Well, so, so he relies on venom? To the gym, like, even once. Dummy, I'm here to carry your arbitrary burden. So, what are you venom doing, dummy? is an addictive steroid that increases strength and stamina tenfold. A normal dose also affects the mind, dumbing it down and causing bouts of rage. <laughs> Superpowers, here I come! No! No! Bullsick! Bullsick! No! That was. You using venom. You're not supposed to. Like no, you're supposed to inject it. You're not supposed to drink it. Million tendrils, and even once break the grip oh. of Supergirl. You can hold up a small. Okay, I mean, that's Supergirl. He's not. That's not Superman. Once survived an all cast ritual called the cleansing. No human has been able to do in over a thousand years. And while it was difficult to determine if this feat was due to Jason's worthiness or stubbornness, it's safe to say that either way, he's a tough guy. Yeah. He to punch through a submarine hull, or at least he carries enough explosives to blow a hole through it. Either way, I wouldn't want to go one on one with mm -hmm. this guy. Red Hood also has plenty of that bat like stealth ability to match his brute strength. Uh -huh. He was able to sneak away from Supergirl. Even Bruce will be proud of that one. <laughs> I mean, pardon me, I guess. But the Red Hood failed and was left to re-examine his own personal code. Really? He ultimately decided to be a hero again, albeit a very conflicted one. He even teamed up with Bats. He even worked alongside other Robins. <laughs> he also leads a group of rags so called the Outlaws. The roller coaster of Red Hood's crime-fighting career has, at best, landed himself in that anti-hero sweet spot, and at worst, made him a violent vigilante who takes the law into his own hands. Those are the heads of all your lieutenants. That took me two hours. You want to see what I can get done in a whole evening? Oh, all right. So, how do I describe it here? Is that? You know, I, I said it was the Red Hood from the beginning. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna stick with Red Hood. Red Hood swat his arms away from Supergirl. And Supergirl is the is the the relative of Superman, of Kal-El, of Clark Kent, the guy who beat Goku twice. I'm sorry. But when you have Supergirl or any or any member of Krypton and, and you are able to withstand that. You are, if you're able to withstand that, you're an automatic bid for victory. Now I get the oh, the, the explosive, uh, yeah, the explosive guns that uh, Bucky has. But I'm gonna say Red Soldier, Red Hood. Sorry, let's do it. Warpers, eight assassins from the Federal, down two miles from your 
Sounds like a party. So much as I'd love to take credit for that one, it wasn't me. It wasn't me, Bruce. But you know what? You can count on me to crack some case. In fact, I believe there's a bit of evidence that demands my attention right now. Because <laughs> he's hungry. <laughs> By the way, next week there's another Marvel character. So Marvel is still in the works. I saw on the, on the wiki, so. On the wiki! Someone out there? Uh, you might want to back up in the window. Okay. Hi, Bucky! You're home! <laughs> yes, and let me remind you that this video is for entertainment purposes. Yeah, I do not own Root Seeds or Death Battle. And already we're in a shooting match. The OK Corral! Modern style! You gotta love it when it's live action. This is the second time it's live action, the first time being Nightwing and Daredevil. Close. I didn't get through the arm. And you saw the venom on uh, Jason's side, so you may use that. Dude, shut. Take a look at my arm. <laughs> yeah, take a look at my arm. I'm also gone. <laughs> you gotta love how they flip the knife. Are you okay? Ooh. Buggy got it. Wait a second. <laughs> the Robin Star. Ooh, arm slam. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that helmet is yeah, taking pretty much. Yeah, that helmet's taking good enough damage. <laughs> Uh oh, the Joker is in his head. Oh, the arm's working again. This might be the game changer. 
The Venom is going to work. Yeah, the Venom didn't really work with uh, Bane, but it might work with Todd. Ooh. Yeah, remember that arm is not indestructible, so if it breaks, you, uh, Bucky's a sin duck. But of course, that gun won't work. What you won? Huh? I like to know there what was going on with that. Why is the winter so? And there he goes. Hey -oh! Oh, oh, talk about it. These two yeah. were quite evenly matched. They both have wells of experience, similar arsenals, and an unparalleled drive to win. They even had almost identical speed and reactionary feats, and yeah, so definitely had better stealth skills. However, Bucky Barnes earned the edge in almost every other way. How? Hell, Red Hood had plenty of experience training with Batman and assassins, but Wendy had decades of training on him with commandos, as the captain's side piece, an emo assassin, and even as Captain America himself. The Winter Soldier also okay. had an edge in defense. His metal arm was able to shatter a knife on impact, but when Red Hood took a similar hit, his helmet cracked. Red right. Red didn't have any way to stop that arm for good, or Bucky's superhumanness. Sure, using Venom could even the playing field for a short time, but a brief power-up is nothing compared to a metal arm and the permanent infinity formula. And don't take uh, Jason Blake yeah. and Supergirl's grip out of context. She wasn't expecting the Venom. And they weren't even fighting in the first place. It's interesting, but not nearly as noteworthy as it sounds. Yeah, really? We know for a fact, Venom is a ten times strength booster. There's no way Red could match a Kryptonian in a real brawl. Red Hood was a deadly huh. combatant, but the Winter Soldier one-upped him with superior experience, survivability, and a consistent strength advantage. Looks like Bucky was the winter. Really? The winner is the Winter Soldier. Ah. Thanks for watching this episode of Death Battle. Go hey, back Chad. To see previews of our upcoming matchups. If you want to watch more stuff. Alright, so it comes in October. I know it's and Venom. Pick up some TV merch at store.researchgeek.com. Ragnarok. Venom versus Corona. Huh. Huh. No, yeah, that was kind of disappointing. Didn't really give him too much of a way about how the Winter Soldier, now uh, Bucky beat Jason. Uh, I mean, I knew that I, the headgear was going to be a factor in some case. But I didn't think it was going to be that bad, bad of a factor. So I was wrong. Kind of feel bad, but I, Bucky was the one who pulled it off and kind of had more. <laughs> Kind of prefer it more towards Marvel that time instead of DC. And the thing, Marvel comes back next week with, well, Venom. So, I mean, I mean, I don't know anything about Krona. Not, not Corona, but Krona. But I'm going to go with Venom on this one because, you know, I know him a lot more than I do about Krona. But we'll see about it in two weeks, which is after my birthday. Happy birthday, me! I'll see you guys next time.